Mars One will establish human settlement on Mars in 2023. In that year, the first group of four humans will land on Mars. Every two years after that, another group will join the settlement. Mars One has designed a mission that is much simpler than previous designs for Mars missions. The most significant simplification is that the crew is actually going to stay and live on Mars with the intention to remain there for the rest of their lives. Mars One invites you to join us in this great adventure. Instead of emigrating to Australia, we're going to emigrate to Mars. It's a possibility. I know a lot of people don't think it is, but it is a big possibility. Hiya, two, four, three. The maths subject I'd love to study early in life, because that's something that's always fascinated me, is early in life. And is there something really out there? And that's another one of the things that's probably drawn me towards Mars is the fact that come go, cause I'm getting a bit worried about this in case this barrier comes down. Um, the the fact that if aliens was ever going to meet humans, I think we've got more possibility of it happening on Mars than we have on Earth because. We wouldn't be a major threat like the people on Earth are to them. So you never know, they may come to us once, once we're there. At first I didn't think anything of it, but I'd been following it for quite some time since they first came out with the idea. And because I'd left me actually applying so late, I didn't think there was any chance whatsoever that I'd get picked for the next round. And then when I got the email saying I've been selected for round two, I couldn't believe it. But it was, it was always something to maybe look forward to that could, that could actually happen. And then when it did, it was amazing. The, the, the one way doesn't bother me because I've already accepted it. Mm. It's, not, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it, it, I, could, I could walk out the door tomorrow and get run over. Yeah. That's it. Done. People will die on Earth. It's not a question of um, if, it's a question of when and how. So um, the death aspect doesn't bother me. Mm. But um, if we waited until it was safe, we'd never do anything. Obviously, I'd have to give away an awful lot of things in order to go. I'm trying not to be callous, but I mean, the, the bigger picture is the bigger picture. You know, um, myself going is a lot more important to a lot more people than me staying in London with Casper. I think the ends justify the means. Right, I'll talk about it, but don't film me. <laughs> Here we go, right. I like black holes. Yeah, I hope that makes your documentary really good. You know, who's going to watch that crap? They're not going to watch it, are they? Nobody's going to get any media or anything nobody's going to put that in a newspaper nobody's going to put it on the tv or whatever so yeah i've got to talk about myself uh, my passions and everything else met, met a lot of news and that but he's got a lot of stories mm. out there and that was me um, blunt scissors cocked up my diy sex swap surgery you know it's it's cocked like up. yeah that's what the press do the the sensationalized I didn't want to die. It wasn't. It wasn't even a, a shout for help or anything like that. It wasn't the actions of a crazy person because before I did it, I knew exactly what I was going to do. It was get rid of them. Once they're gone, they're gone. So what what I did was I sat on the toilet, pair of scissors. I'd had a drink to try and numb the pain, and I rung an ambulance. And as soon as I heard the sirens, I got the scissors and hacked into my testicles and there. I'd left the door open and, yeah, the ambulance man rushed in and took the scissors and everything off me. I'd done quite a bit of damage to, to down below and 
rushed to the hospital and sewn up. The biggest thing that's got to me, and you can't really call it bullying or such, I suppose, in a way, is, is probably the rejection from my parents, saying that they don't ever want to see me again. To me, that's the most helpful thing that can ever happen in your life. And that's because I'm transgender. My kids, I've lost my children. And that's because I'm transgender. If I can leave everything behind for this dream of being a woman, I can leave everything behind for my next dream of living on Mars. Because I'm not so much of the scientific side of things, mm. I'd be more interested in the survival aspect. It's going to be seriously mentally draining. I mean, even, the, even the transit time between Earth and Mars is seven to eight months. So that's seven to eight months in a little tin can with three other people. Well, this is where I can draw up on my experience of being in the army with the training. I don't think it's necessary to have a little, but it does help. Mm. Not having so much baggage. But then you've got the emotional baggage, so in five different prisons. Five years? Five different prisons. Oh, you've been five? Yeah. Yeah. Driving offences. Right. What kind of driving offences? Drink. Drink driving, yeah. Yeah. How long were you in prison for? Before you came out and met her? Two months, six yeah. weeks. She met somebody else at the hospital. Five years we've been together, two kids. It's not working out. I don't want to be with you anymore. Text. It's just a chance for me to do something. It sounds a bit selfish that I want to do. Mm. And I'm kind of absolved of my responsibility to my kids because I don't see them and they don't live for me. But I don't always think that way. It's, it's a mixed bag of emotions, really. Yeah, Who's to say in them ten years' time that I wouldn't reconnect? Yeah. All I can say is that it still wouldn't change my mind. Am I... Do I have any sort of an upper hand because I've got less to lose or more to lose? There's no... I don't see... I don't see a good, of, a good or bad side to it, if you know what I mean. I'm not looking at... Spending the next ten years saying goodbye to everybody. Yeah. I haven't got that problem. So literally, just like this, two weeks. Two weeks, no. like this. Last Christmas, Casper uh, and I locked ourselves in this flat for two weeks, and just to see how we would cope. Um, it was really interesting. Um, we got enough food for two weeks, locked the door and never went out again until early January. Wow. <laughs> Someone has to take the first step. Someone has to take the chance and go out and colonize planets and learn the hard lessons uh, that being the first pioneers are going to teach us. And, well, why, why couldn't that be me? Why couldn't I do something that great for science and for humanity? And but at one stage, uh, as we now know, that you obviously didn't get through to the next round, mm. yeah. and Alison did. Did you find out together that you had both, well, that you had not yeah. got through? And... That was really harsh, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, that was not so fun. No, it was not. I've always liked history and things like that. And, you know, some of these great leaders like Joan of Arc and things like that, to be, to be like, to be like that, that did more than life expected of them. Only good people. I don't agree with things like other people who've gone down in history, like Hitler and people like that. If I go to Mars and it does, it does all work out, and we do create a settlement, then 
in a way, I think that's not not just providing for my kids' future, but their kids' future, and so on and so on. Yeah. I'm at the age now where I've lived a good portion of my life. I've had kids, I've been in the army, I've done this, that and the other. I'm ready to do something with the rest of my life, you know what I mean? And this is like a one-way commitment, so mm. why not? As tough as it's going to be, um, give it you know, half a year, a year, eventually I will have moved on. Uh, it, it's just inevitable. Uh, it will be sad and... Half a year. <laughs> I, I, what I meant to say was five years. Okay? That's okay. Good. Okay, yes, five <laughs> years. <laughs> I think we, we'll always be friends, regardless of what happens. And if we're here together, we'll, we'll be more than friends. If I can, I will go to Mars and I will live out the rest of my life there. If I can. The thing is, like I said to you, with Mars 1, it's that, that goal of doing something that nobody's ever done before. And since I became Mel, I have become so ambitious, it's unreal. I don't know whether it's that pent-up sort of 40 years of not being able to be who I wanted to be, not being able to do the things that I wanted to do. It was like, it's all exploded and all my ambitions and everything that I should have always had have come out now. The best way to, to explain it is... I set whatever I set my eyes on, if I set my eyes on something, I do it. And one of the things I, I like to prove is the impossible is actually possible. <laughs>